So it seems like Sony finally figured it out. And now you could officially get the Sony FX6 without having to wait a year and a half for it to show up at your door. And since that's happened and the Sony FX6 has become more available, more and more creators are starting to post about this camera, switch into this camera, upgrade, or even downgrade. And maybe a couple actually left the system and won't go back. But in today's video, I'm not just gonna talk about the Sony FX6 and why some people might have actually picked it. I actually decided to ask people. I asked some of your favorite filmmaking YouTube channels about the Sony FX6 and their experience. And here's what all of them have to say. Now, first things first, the Sony FX6 is a great documentary camera. So I decided to ask the person who's pretty much the king of documentaries on YouTube in Mark Bone. What is, is that one hair sticking out? We're keeping it, it's not going anywhere. The FX9, I'm actually shooting this video on the FX9. Pretty much that's what the FX9 does for me now is it's my bench video camera here in the office. That said, I still love using the FX9 for our feature films because the image is just so clean and robust is not really a helpful term. But we were just in New York color correcting our feature film Clear Sky and this was in a giant theater and the image looked amazing. That said, I'm not using the FX9 as much as I used to now that I have the FX6. But one reason that I'm using the FX6 more than my 9 these days is this one button. Let's see if the FX9 will fall out there. To, oh, focused. The FX9 is just bitter that I'm not talking about it. It's this button right here, this blurry mess. That's the S and Q button. And as any documentary filmmaker knows, as anyone, just anyone who shoots knows that real time is very important. But it's also great just to be able to switch over to something like 60 frames for a quick hot second to get some slow motion footage for your film. And the issue with the FX9 is like, it's like a three step process. You gotta take it out of full frame 6K and go to 5K crop and then, then you can get to 60 frames. There's actually no way to shoot full frame 4K on the FX9 in 60 frames as an S and Q option. The image on the FX6 is a nine out of 10. I would say the image on the FX9 is a 10 out of 10 but also the FX6 has way better low light performance than the FX9. So there's there's just trade-offs. Neither are perfect cameras, but more so I do find myself using the FX6, although I think the 9's image, as I mentioned, is stronger. I want my footage on set to feel as close to the final product, so. And thanks for having me by, Kofi. Where's that hair going? Oh, it disappeared. Oh no, there it is. Where is it? It's back. Camera gear. Now the next person we're gonna ask about the Sony FX6 is going to be Jason Morris. Now Jason Morris has a wealth of information on his channel about a bunch of different cameras, especially the Sony ones. And not only does he put out stuff for the Sony FX6, but he has a ton of other cameras as well. But when he's working with his own production company, Jack Visions, typically you're going to see the Sony FX6 on set. So let's find out why. Thanks Coffee for having me on your YouTube channel. If you guys don't know me, my name is Jason Morris and I do a whole bunch of tips, tricks, tutorials on pretty much Sony gear, filmmaking stuff, photography, all those kind of things. I'm sure he'll put a link in the description below. Now I do obviously a lot of YouTube and social media content, but commercials, Kickstarters, so those kind of things are my main bread and butter. And the FX6 has been a crucial part in uh, producing a lot of quality content for, you know, companies and corporate videos and all those kind of things. This thing here is probably one of the best investments that I've had when it comes to my production company, especially when it comes to run and gun, event filmmaking, even weddings, all those kind of things. This thing pretty much can do it all. And one of the biggest reasons is that internal ND filter. Now, I'd hate to use the word game changer, but the internal ND filter is an absolute game changer. If you go, especially if you are in an event, if you go from inside to outside, you can pretty much completely get rid of the ND filter, bring it back if you need, and then variably adjust that ND filter if you are in bright situations. Because if you are on an alpha camera, obviously you have to you know, unscrew the ND filter, put it into a pocket somewhere, and then if you are going straight outside, get out of your pocket and put it straight back on. It just comes down to convenience and some of these factors with the FX6 is convenience. And at the end of the day, that's what cinema cameras are. They have all the buttons on the outside. They're super convenient and super easy. So you don't have to worry about you know, operating this. You have to uh, worry about telling the story. You have to worry about framing and composition. All those kind of things you can worry about as opposed to actually camera operating this thing. But when it comes to the professional commercial side, this thing is definitely the way to go. Time code in and out is extremely crucial when it comes to a couple of my sets that I've been on because the 
the sound here will actually link up the tentacle and I'll be able to pull out, you know, the time code and be able to sync it in post, which obviously is a really good thing when it comes to, you know, recording sound externally. Another one of my favorite things is SDI out because I love using BNC cables because they are so much more reliable than HDMI cables. But I mean, at least it's a full size HDMI, not like Canon when it comes to micro HDMI, right? <laughs> But the good thing about having the SDI out is that it also has HDMI out. So you can actually utilize both of those cords at the same time, which I've done actually before. The great thing is, is that I can have one that's attached directly to a video transmitter. The HDMI and the SDI will be the exact same output, no latency. So it's great for a first AC or it's just great to have for a director's monitor. One of the biggest things that I love about the FX6 and keeps drawing me back to it is the form factor. Now, I know it is huge. It is a very big camera, but when it comes to having natural movement, especially when it comes to my sports films, this makes the camera movement look so much more natural and pleasing, in my opinion. The Alpha cameras have IBIS inside and it tends to stabilize quite well, but then it sort of jerks in different positions that you don't want it to, and it doesn't look as natural as natural handheld movements. I think one of the biggest things why people are starting to get the FX6 now is probably the global chip shortage. Like that seems to have started to ease up a little bit and people are, you know, finally getting their orders that they've put in, you know, a year ago. So <laughs> there are FX6s available again. But I think also when it comes to people buying the FX6 is that it's going to be really good for another three or four years time 4k 120 frames per second professional uh sdi and hdmi inputs nd filters internally that are variable which is you know phenomenal and some cinema cameras still don't even have so there are a lot of features on here that people are still drawn to and will be still drawn to you know years down the track and 4k will pretty much be the norm when it comes to uh the basics of having a cinema camera Hey, my name is Courtney of Film by Fresh, and I've been using the Sony FX9 for about two plus years, and it's been really good to me. I've used it both professionally and personally, you know, for like my home videos, but then also for, you know, client work, various client jobs, whether I'm being hired as a camera DP op uh, for, you know, independent feature films or music videos or YouTube, of course. And I recently decided to switch to the FX6 as of yesterday. <laughs> for a few reasons, and it's kind of past due for me, but let me break it down. The first question we have to answer is why now? Uh, the You know, the FX6 has been out for what, two years almost, and uh, FX9 was out for about what, almost three years. And the reason I did it now uh, is for one, because the FX6 was not out when I got my FX9. So had that been the case, I definitely would've gotten the FX6 over the nine because of, you know, me being like a one man band. I don't really need a, a larger crew camera. You know, I don't have first ACs or, you know, other people working off or jamming time code or doing any of that stuff on my camera, like 99% of the time. Uh, and I say 99 because 1% of that time that I own the FX9, I actually was hired to be a camera op slash DP for a independent, you know, feature film. And I was working with a crew of people and I needed, you know, all, I need the extra SDI ports. I needed the XLR to be on body. I needed, you know, all the other features that the FX9 offered because I wasn't the only one operating it at one point. I had focus pullers and all these other people putting their stuff on my rig. And it was beneficial in that situation. And also I was hired because I had an FX9. Um, so it kind of worked out in that situation. But that was, you know, that's far and few in between. I don't really get those kind of gigs all the time and i haven't for the past year so the fx9 was kind of overstand it's welcome with me personally because like i said i just film mostly youtube content actually my day job i work for another production company where i film all their youtube content and I edit that you know all the time so that's that's normally what i do and of course like i said home videos music videos different client projects that come up that don't require me to hire other people normally it's just me so it was kind of overdue you know I, I needed to get a camera that was definitely more more convenient to hold <laughs> the fx9 is a big camera uh, like i said because it is a crew camera but my job's changing was the main reason as to why i decided to switch to something that was a bit more nimble speaking of it being more nimble the size of the fx6 it's literally like half the the body size is definitely like half of the fx9 the weight it's a ton 
lighter and smaller than the FX9. And being that, I'm a, I'm a big guy, don't get me wrong, I'm a big guy. I can I was holding the FX9 faithfully for handheld shots and running gun stuff, uh, but my back would start to hurt after a little while. So size is definitely one of the biggest factors as to why I switched from the 9 to the 6. Also, Sony did kind of cannibalize the FX9 with some of the features that they decided to put in the 6 over the 9, for instance, 4K 120. Um, granted, it's not something I use all the time, but shooting music videos, 120 frames per second is definitely nice. You know, of course you have all the normal tropes of music videos where you have super slow-mo, where you have cool lighting going on and it looks doper in slow motion. Um, fast moving objects in the background, like if you have like curtains moving really quick, and you wanna have like a cool textured background that's moving, slow motion helps with that for B-roll. Music videos are like 50%, 60-70% b-roll so having nice slow motion to mix it up and then also mix it in you know 24 mix in some fast stuff speed ramps it helps having more frames to slow it down uh, also them adding easier raw capture for the fx9 if i wanted to record in prores raw i'd have to buy a ninja v plus or ninja v uh, or the what the shogun 7 and then also i have to get this big ass extension on the back of the fx9 that's another twenty five hundred dollars and so you're paying what 500 for the monitor you got to buy the ssds you got to pay another 2500 for the extension unit and then also it's just literally like two feet two and a half feet long it's ridiculous so uh them adding raw capture through hdmi to a ninja v is like man i wish that was the case for the fx9 but you know with time comes more advancements and they gave the fx6 that really dope feature but didn't pass it over to the FX9. I'm assuming because they have tons of extension units to sell, and they didn't want to completely cannibalize that that you know product line. So they had to give you some roundabout way to get ProRes RAW, even though given the size of the camera, it probably could have been internal. But you know we won't get into that. And those are a handful of reasons as to why I switched to the FX6 from the FX9. But I'm running out of time. Uh, thank you for featuring me in this video, Kofi. It's been a pleasure. If you guys want to hear more about my process and the switching and all that stuff and some more specifics, feel free to stop over to the channel uh, after you watch this, of course. Mondo Ferreira is one of the YouTube OGs, and I've been watching him for years, testing out different cameras for his productions. Now, Mondo actually did a direct upgrade from the Sony FX3 to a different camera, but we actually want to talk about what he loved about the Sony FX3 and why it would take somebody that's a creator on that camera to upgrade to the FX6. Thank you, Kofi, for having me on your YouTube channel. My name is Armando Ferreira and I run a YouTube channel called Mondo Bytes. And the camera system that I primarily use is the Sony FX3. What I really like about the Sony FX3 is that it checks most of the marks of what I'm looking for in a cinema camera. But really it's the form factor. I love the small and compact size. And just for like YouTube and even like professional work, it just punches way above its weight class. Now obviously there's things I dislike about this camera. For example, I don't like that it doesn't have built-in ND filters. I also don't like that it doesn't have like shutter angle, couple minor little quirks, but for the most part, I really love the FX3. The way the FX6 fits into my workflow is that I utilize that camera on more professional shoots because it has everything that the FX3 offers, but also other things. As I mentioned, built-in ND filters being the primary one, but also external SDI, shutter angle, and among other things. I think the reason why people are buying the FX6 or are switching to the FX6 is because currently right now in the market, in 2023, there's nothing available that offers so much value for your money. And I also think that people that already own a Sony Alpha camera, like an A7S, an A7 IV, or even myself, like an FX3, and I see all of the incredible features that this camera has, it makes me wanna get something even better that has more options, which is the reason why I added the FX6 to my arsenal. Now I wanna hit on like one point that Armando says, and it's really great that he mentioned that the FX6 is more of a camera for professional setups. So when you're working on different client work or short films, the FX3 and the FX6 have similar sensors, but it gives you that much more in terms of some of the features that are unique to more built out cinema cameras. Now, some people use the FX6 for professional setups and some people just like having nice things. And that's where we're gonna to get to Chris Brockers, who's an amazing creator as well, especially on the Sony system. And he's pretty much used every single Sony camera just like the rest of us has but he actually uses Sony FX6 in a slightly different way that you might not expect. The big appeal for me for the FX6 came from a couple of things really. I shoot mostly video and I had the A7S 3 the FX3 and I love gear and you naturally start looking at what is the next level up, the next step from these cameras. Something actually feels like a video camera because as great as these are 
they don't feel ergonomically like good for shooting video in some situations. So that's one of the things. The second thing was that ND filter. There's a lot of times where I knew it'd be really, really handy and I wanted to try it out. This is actually quite funny and it did take me a while to, to realize this. I do think for the kinds of things that I shoot, which is real estate and weddings, mostly in terms of client work outside of YouTube and content creation for myself, the FX6 really doesn't make a lot of logical sense. It's too much, it's too big, requires too much of uh, a rig to really make it functional. And I actually don't use it a huge amount for my client work now. It's easier just to bring smaller cameras with me, not have to worry so much about them. So it really doesn't fit into my workflow much anymore. And there's been a few times I've wanted to sell it. And this is gonna sound really ridiculous, but you know how some people have Leicas for their personal photography that they don't bring into their, their client work because they just like using them, it's fun to use them. That's where I've been really enjoying using the FX6 recently. I've actually been using it a lot for making my own stuff, my own family films, capturing my kids growing up and making like the world's best dad home movies. That is as ridiculous as it sounds. I am using a cinema camera to do that. Definitely not rigged up like this. This is for some other things I'm testing out, but just as a real like trimmed down version, I literally attach a strap to it, throw it over my shoulder and bring it with me when we take the kids out. And uh, that's how I've been using it a lot recently. All right, so don't be alarmed. There are two Jasons in this video. And the next person we're gonna talk to is going to be Jason Anthony, who's another YouTuber that's here on this channel as well, and someone who knows a lot more about DaVinci Resolve than I do. Now, Jason has unique experience with the Sony FX6 because he actually came from a different system entirely. Thank you so much for having me on today, Kofi. And, and yeah, I'm definitely down to chat about the FX6. Now, the camera system that I was using prior to was the Red Komodo. In fact, in 2021, I was using using two of those on all of my productions. Now, the reason why I left the Red Komodo and went to the Sony FX6 camera system is because of workflow. Workflow, workflow, workflow. The Komodo is a slower camera to use. It's gonna cost you more money on set per day using it as well. The reason being is not only do you have to hire two focus pullers and ACs, but you need that second camera operator. Now with the Sony cameras, they're way easier to use. You can have smaller crews and not every shoot is going to require department rolls and a red camera. So you could save yourself a ton of money. Now researching new camera systems while I had the red Komodo, I noticed that a lot of the documentaries were being shot on the Sony FX6s and 9s. All of the reality TV, they phased out the FS5s and 7s and now using FX6s and 9s. And even at NFL sports games and professional sports games, you see those cameras being used paired with even FX3s on gimbals. So this had me wondering what is so good about these cameras. Shortly after researching what it was, I mean, we have two native ISOs, 12,800 looking super clean in low light situations. We have built-in NDs and the auto ND features. So now if we want to track our subject going from inside the house to outside, we can have that seamless exposure being changed and it just looks incredible. We have S-Log3 that could be graded really nicely. And lastly, the unbelievable autofocus that this camera has to feature. Now we're gonna have to travel out of the country again because we're gonna go and have a chat with Alexander Don and talk about why he not only has a Sony FX6, but he also has another camera as well. And he uses both in his workflow. Okay, cool. So. Uh, basically, the reason I have two cinema cameras, one has autofocus and one also has autofocus, but not as good as the other one. So basically, uh, we all know that RED introduced uh, autofocus recently, but it's not like uh, mind blowing in terms of performance. And therefore, Sony FX6 has a really, really good autofocus. So usually when I use the FX6, I use it with Sony lenses which speeds up my process quite a lot. And also the fact that it has internals ND, it makes everything so much faster in terms of workflow. There are situations where if I'm super fast and if I'm able to finish a project uh, in less time, then I'm gonna make more money if uh, rather than spending a lot of time working on a project. The issue I think everyone has with is like they spend too much time on a project and it's hard to take another project Usually in my situation, I like to be super fast. So that's why I use the FX6. And also because the quality that it has, it's, it works best for most cases. The reason I got the Red Komodo as well, it is because it has a 6K sensor. And not a lot of people know this, but 
uh, Bayer sensors, this sensor has 4K pixels, like for example the FX6, it's not actually a 4K sensor. So basically even though it has 4K, uh, 4000 pixels, you need 2 pixels to create an image. So when you combine 2 pixels, 2 pixels, 2 pixels, you end up with a 2.7K image. In reality that upscales to 4K. You don't really shoot 4K necessarily. So basically when you have a 6K sensor, then you're gonna have in reality a 4K sensor. Recently I started shooting on the FX30 as well and you really see the difference in 4K compared to the FX3 for example or the FX6. It's much sharper, it's easier to crop for Instagram without losing quality and that is mainly because in reality it's a 4K sensor because it downscales for six, from 6K to 4K but um, this is a thing that people don't really know about cameras uh, because it's usually a marketing thing for brands to market their cameras as being 4K because in reality they have 4000 pixels but at the end when the whole processing goes it's a 2.7K that upscales to 4K. I can use the Komodo running gun with no issues, I can use the uh, FX6 on a big end production with no issues. So both are pretty much okay when it comes to uh, what they can do but the thing is because red has such a good name when it comes to like marketing it kind of puts you a little bit higher on top when it comes to some clients some clients want the red because uh, they give uh, i don't know exactly how to say it but it gives them comfort knowing that they're gonna shoot the project on a red so it's good to have a multiple uh, multiple cameras in your back especially from a business perspective. Now, when it comes to the debate between the Sony FX6 and the Red Komodo, it's gonna be different strokes for different folks. And I actually talked about how I did the reverse and I actually left the Komodo system for the Sony FX6. Now, there are some people that love the Sony FX6 and some that actually wanna turn away from it and never go back. And you're gonna find that in Moji Wilson, who's an amazing filmmaker and actually one of my favorites in terms of people that are up and coming in the filmmaking space here on YouTube. However, he went to something else and we're gonna find out why. All right, so we can all take opinions in here, right? Okay, okay. The Ursa 12K is better than the Sony FX6. Okay, I said it, let me explain. I had the Sony FX6 for a year and I sold it. People were confused at why I got rid of it, but I knew exactly why. It's literally a perfect running gun camera, perfect for the guys that are shooting doc style productions and find themselves shooting in these uncontrollable spaces. You have the auto ND, you have the great reliable autofocus, you have full frame sensors so you can crop in and it's really great in low light. It's a great camera, yes, yes it is but I wasn't inspired by the images anymore. I was creating really great projects that I can say I'm proud of, but I felt like I had to put too much effort into the images to get them in a space that I was happy with. So I ended up switching to the Ursa 12K, and yes, it shoots 4K. I feel like I have to say that every time to everyone. If you've shot with Blackmagic cameras before, you know how distinctive their look is. Sony has a look, Airy has a look, Red has a look, and me personally, I just prefer Blackmagic's look. I love the B-Raw workflow inside of DaVinci, and to me, it's unmatched. The menu system is super simple, and when I'm going to look for something, I feel like it's just always right in front of me and just easy to access. Blackmagic's menu system is honestly dummy proof. I feel like you don't even have to know about cameras and you can change some settings. <laughs> so yeah, these are just tools and I feel more inspired by the Ursa right now and you never know what I'll be more inspired by next month, next year. Uh, these are just cameras, these are just tools that I use to tell stories, and this is what I am inspired by currently. Right now, in this current moment, I don't think I'm switching back to Sony. I'm honestly keeping my eye out on the next camera Blackmagic has coming next. I don't know, I just feel like they have something crazy coming that might shake up the industry. <laughs> I talk a lot more about the Ursa 12K and just Blackmagic period over on my channel. So if you wanna know more about why I switched to the Ursa 12K from the Sony FX6, head over there and I'll meet you there. So thanks bro for reaching out and I hope this uh, video clip works, so.
Peace. Now, the only oak I know from Austria is actually going to be Arnold. However, we're going to have a chat with award-winning cinematographer Damian Cooper, the channel formerly known as Monkey Pixels. Now, I've been trying to convince him to actually switch to the Sony FX system, but there's no helping him. So there's different kind of ways to think about it because there's the YouTuber Damien Cooper and there's also the documentary filmmaker Damien Cooper. So I didn't really feel like I just wanted to switch to Sony for various reasons because I have so much stuff. Like I have three Canon cameras, I have 18 lenses, cine lenses, all of them with EF or RF mount. So for me, switching to the Sony is more of a lateral move. I'm not even saying that my Canons are better or worse. It just, it wouldn't be worth the hassle of getting rid of all my Canon stuff. So if Sony were to approach me and say like, hey, remake this easier for you, it's a different thing. For me personally, for my own projects, my own documentaries that I do for YouTube, the Canon is actually almost the ideal camera for me. However, when approached by other production companies, I feel the pressure of everybody wants to shoot in Sony. So this is maybe one tipping point where I would say like, okay, maybe going over to Sony might be the right move in the future. You actually tested the FX6 versus the C70, and I think you have two videos of them versus each other. Now, when you were using it, what were some of the things that you liked and, and some of the things you disliked for either, if you guys want to check out the full video, but if you want to give us like a Cole's notes of why like even in a perfect world, if it was a completely lateral shift and you didn't lose any money and someone took care of selling the gear for you, would you make that switch if it was as easy as possible? And what are some of the features that made you kind of think, maybe I will do that? So first of all, yes, I did like make two or three videos about this and I got so much crap from the Sony community because, and, and this is something that was so misunderstood because I love the Sony FX6. I think it's an amazing camera. It's one of the best cameras out there ever. And if I had to choose between different kind of cameras, just as an all-rounder, it would definitely be the Sony FX6 and the Canon C70. But just these nuances that I maybe didn't like as much as I did on my Canon, people completely took out of proportion and were just giving me hell for it. Um, so the things I like about the camera is just the ergonomics, the ND filters, just the ease of use. It A lot of things make a lot of sense. Like you get so much in that kind of small form factor for that price. And I feel like Sony isn't holding back. They're just giving you everything you ask for and more. What I didn't like about the camera were just really little quirks. For example, the ND filters. I love the ND filter systems, but I also like to shoot wide open. I do a lot of documentary work, running, gunning in really outdoorsy scenarios in the desert, in Mexico. So eight stops or seven stops of ND, what, what is it? It's not enough, actually. Like, this talking head is recorded on eight stops of ND right now. Like, I'm on eight stops of internal NDs, and I'm even blowing out the background. So it's just, the, I feel like the seven stops would just hinder me a little bit. Yes, of course, I could just stop down, but then it would change the way I wanted to portray my, my vision, especially if I'm on a wide angle. I like to shoot as wide open as possible to get at least a little bit of background separation. I could, of course, get an external ND filter, but then... Why do I have the internal ND filter? The other thing was just the image in and of itself. I'm not saying that the Sony has a shitty image. Like there's so much great images coming out with Sony FX6, but I personally felt like the dynamic range on the camera cameras was just a bit better. And like all the lab tests also stated that it's like one stop above. And dynamic range is so important for me. So those two things were probably the key factors why I wouldn't want to switch from Canon to Sony. But Again, like if you were to just like steal all my equipment right now, insurance would pay up and I had to buy everything new. Honestly, it's a coin toss. Like you could just, I, I'd probably go red to be honest, like at this point in my career. But um, just for the, the all around documentary commercial work and especially because I feel like if you're being hired as a DP or as a filmmaker cinematographer, Sony it's where it's at. Like I just watch a lot of Netflix and every time I watch and you see behind the scenes, oh, what's shot on? It's always Sony. Now, the Sony FX6 has been out for a couple of years now. It's not necessarily a new camera. It's just one you can actually get your hands on. And the fact that this camera's had two trips around the sun, people are starting to bring up talks about what they would expect out of a Mark II. I don't see it coming anytime soon, but here's what people have to say. Big things I'd love to see in an FX6 Mark II or whatever that ends up being called. Number one, audio input without the handle, anything. Just a 3.5 mil input. Even a little adapter that you can just snap on the top when the top panel's not on there and have a 3.5 mm input. I'd take that. 
I've spoken with a Sony engineer directly about this and I don't think it will happen, but that's one thing. The other thing would be, I'd love to have some form of stabilization outside of OSS lenses because there are times when I just wanna run with a really trimmed down setup. And if you're using a really light lens, you're not all rigged up like this and the movement looks natural. If it's too light, it looks shaky and janky and I don't love it. So I'd love to see that in there, but I don't think it's technically possible in terms of the size that would be required of the body, but also the tech. Stabilization might mean movement of the sensor is required. And then I don't know how that would work with the ND filter as well. So yeah, don't know, probably not gonna happen, but that's what I'd like to see. I'd also like to see some form of uniformity between the codex on there. But you can't shoot in 60 frames per second compressed 10 bit, which makes no sense. There's some other things like that, but just a little bit more uniformity like you see in the FX3, something like that would be nice as well. The one thing that I would really, really like in a Mark II, obviously is audio directly into the body. You take this handle off, you have no audio because this handle, it's pretty average. And sometimes I use, sometimes I use this handle. It's pretty much a handlebar tilter. It is extremely solid because it's a metal design, uh, but it just is a little bit you know, lower in that form factor and just ergonomically just a touch better than the Sony handle. And once you take that handle off, there's no audio into the body, which really does suck. Luckily, a lot of the times I am recording audio externally through um, a Zoom H5 or the sound has got their own sound. But still, I would love to have you know, an XLR input on the body, just like the FS5 did. The FS5 had one on the handle and one on the body. Not sure why they got rid of it in the FX6. The only other thing that I would actually like in this is probably active stability. Now, I know the alpha cameras, they generally have your IBIS and active stability inside, which is essentially your uh, what is it, digital stabilization. I would love the FX6 to have the ability to have you know digital stabilization where it crops in just a touch and gives you some form of stability because there are some times where the OSS lens just isn't enough and I would love to have that extra stability on top. And I know it's a cinema camera and we are meant to use gimbals and stabilizers, tripods, all those kind of things, but there are some run and gun situations that I have have been in and I've chosen this camera and it's just, it's not stable enough, but it is what it is. Majority of the time, if I know I'm going to be in that situation, I will rig this up with my RS3 Pro um, onto you know my uh, gimbal ring and easy rig. So that's generally the situation and I'd be putting this one in. But if there was that active steady shot or active stability, that would be nice. Now what I hope to see happen in an FX6 Mark II is have a higher resolution. For example, 6K or even 8K would be awesome. Even better recording options like ProRes or ProRes RAW internally would be cool. But more importantly, I hope they change the display. I think the display on the FX6 is eh, it's like whatever. Hopefully it's much larger, kind of like the DJI Ronin 4D. Really like that larger display, brighter. And also please, I hope to see the XLRs built into the camera not on the handle. Now, if I was asked by Sony, what I'd like to see in a Mark II, there's a couple things. Let's get rid of that top handle and let's put either XLR or a three and a half mil audio jack on the body. I know for so many people, not only has like the mic mount been breaking off of people's top handles, hot shoes not being strong enough to hold monitors, it really is limiting when we can't use the top handle, but we wanna record audio. Another thing I'd like to see done would be having a lower stop of ND at our lowest point. Sometimes one fourth is too much. And then if we turn the ND off, we have to stop down to like five, six. So that is another feature I'd like to see given with the FX6. And lastly, I like to see more accessories for the FX line. The Red Komodo has tons of different lens adapters cages and just overall a lot more accessories available for that body and i'd love to see that with the fx line and the last person that we're going to talk to about why they switched to the sony fx6 is going to be oh this guy for me personally i actually started my videography career on the sony system starting off with the sony a6000 which was my first pro camera into the sony a7 III and the a7r3 now during the pandemic unfortunately my a7r3 and my a7 III broke at the same time and in a rage quit fashion, I actually switched into the Canon system and I actually use the Blackmagic Pocket 4K as my video camera and the Canon EOS R for photography and vlog content. 
somewhere down the line and through upgrades and doing different jobs, I had upgraded my cinema camera to the Canon C200. Ironically, on the same day that the Canon C70 was released and Honestly, I didn't feel that much FOMO because I wanted to rock the C200 till the wheels fell off. I also upgraded my Canon EOS R into the R5 because honestly, I just wanted to shoot an AK and honestly, I didn't really do it that much. Now, after swearing to never go to the Canon C70 because I had the C200 and I pretty much got everything I wanted, I caved and did it. And I shot a couple of projects with it and it did do really well. However, once I ran into some issues with low light, I realized that somewhere down the line, it's gonna be a problem. So I actually sent it back before the return date, which was actually only about one day off. And that's what brought me back into the Sony FX line. I started off with the Sony FX3 because I couldn't get an FX6 much like a lot of you guys did. But over time, some patience and actually making a deal with the devil, or my first AC, I actually picked up the Sony FX6 and I've been using it for almost two years now. Now there isn't anything that was previously said that I'm not already gonna say. I love the features that come into this camera as a professional cinema camera. I love the SDI ports, I love the XLR. I love the fact that it has built-in electronic NDs. It has external raw in case I need it. And obviously, just like everybody else, I'm not a fan of that top handle, mostly because I keep breaking it. But at the end of the day, we are just picking tools to do the jobs that we do on a day-to-day -day basis. And for a lot of people, now that the Sony FX6 is available, well, that's gonna be the tool of choice for a lot of people. That being said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, found it entertaining, or at the very least learned something you might not have known about the Sony FX6 and why your favorite creators are switching. If you guys had fun here, make sure you like the video, press the subscribe button down below. We're almost at 10,000 subscribers, and I wanna do a lot more videos just like these, asking other creators their thoughts about the tools that they use to do the professional work or just to do stuff for themselves. That being said, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.